The ribbon allows us to execute different commands inside of Revit. We can find that ribbon going across the top of our screen. In this case, it's saying wall, door, window, and it's given us a variety of different commands that we can execute. If we click on one of the different tabs going across the top, such as the structure tab, we can now see a different variety of commands associated with that particular tab. You could also move over to the annotate tab, click on the annotate tab, and see your different annotation tools, which will include your dimensions, your drawing tools, such as line work, arcs, circles. There's the ability to do text, and all these show up as different commands on your ribbon. Now, if we move back over again and select on architecture to see the architecture tools, we'll begin to notice there's also different categories on our ribbon. These different categories, they're also called panels, include the build, circulation, model, and they're named after the different tools that happen to be on that particular panel. Since we're talking about panels, I do want to mention that if you want to be able to move a panel to a different location, it is possible to do. All you have to do is highlight over the bar there at the bottom of your screen, left click and hold your mouse button down, and you can drag that panel either to a different location on your ribbon or just somewhere out on your screen and let it sit there so that you have those commands in a more easily available area to be able to click on and execute. If you want to be able to bring that panel back up to your ribbon, all you have to do is move your mouse up, click, hold your mouse button down, drag it back up to the location you'd like to be at, and then when you see that gray area show up, just let go of the button and it'll automatically dock itself back onto that panel. One other thing to know about the ribbon as far as being able to reorganize this different information, if you don't like the location of where one of these is located at, for instance, maybe you'd want structure in front of architecture, if that's the case, all you have to do is hold down the control key on your keyboard, left click and hold down your mouse button on the tab that you want to be able to move over, and then you can drag this over and let go in order to be able to rearrange the tabs on the ribbon. So once again, if you want to be able to move this structure, so in this case, it's on the other side of the architecture, all you'd have to do is hold control down on your keyboard, move your mouse up here, left click, hold the mouse button down and drag it over. And you can drag that over to any place you want along your ribbon. Now on the ribbon, there's a variety of different buttons. And that's actually what we're looking at here. So here you can see I have beam and wall and column. If I highlight here on architecture and click on the architecture tab, we have different commands. Now, if I highlight over the word door, we can see that the door button highlights. It also gives us this little flyout menu. This first starts off by saying, what does this command do? In this case, it says door, adds door to the building model. Then if you highlight over it for about one second, it'll automatically pop up an illustration showing what the command does or what it adds. We can illustrate this as well by moving over the word window here, seeing the one window, and then seeing it expand itself out to illustrate how windows work. One thing I do want to mention is based on the resolution of your computer screen, these buttons might be slightly different sizes. In other words, your window button might be the same size as what my door button is. Right now I'm working on a small computer screen at a lower resolution. So as a result of that, you'll find that the ribbon will automatically resize its commands based on the amount of screen real estate that you have available to you. So your window button might be larger, same size as my door button, and that's okay. It executes the same command. Now there are different kinds of buttons available inside of Revit as well. This is just your standard button. And if you would click on door, you'll see it automatically executes the door command. To get out of a command in Revit, all you have to do is hit the escape key on your keyboard. There are two other kinds of buttons though that you need to know about. The first kind of button is going to be called a drop down button. And you can see that whenever there's this little dark triangle next to a command. If you click on that little dark triangle, you'll get a variety of different commands which are associated with that command. In this case, I'm seeing structural column as well as column architectural. We can see that as well over here where we have stairs. That little down arrow click on it, and it gives us a variety of different options associated with that command. And once again, this is called the drop down button. There's also a split button inside of the program, and walls is an excellent example of a split button, because it has this button and it's split into two different categories. The first picture is activating whatever the default option is. 
So just draw in a default regular wall. But if you want to be able to pick on the kind of wall that you want to be able to do, you can move down here to where it says wall, and you can select on the word wall. And this will give you a drop down list of do you want to do architectural walls, structural walls, or different commands related to the wall command. So the ribbon allows you to be able to execute a variety of different commands, which will then have functions inside of Revit.